Okay, so for this um, just basic bit of animation in 3D, we're just going to look at a really simple exercise which is a bouncing ball. The reason we want to look at this is because it involves setting some keyframes and then controlling our easing curves, our function curves, to make sure that the animation looks the way it should look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just creating some keyframe animation, then I'm going to time the keyframe animation, then I'm going to change the function curves. So here's my bouncing ball. I just want it to bounce three or four times. I'm going to start with it up in the air and I'm going to use the ground plane as my ground. So at the start of my animation, I'm at frame zero. I've lifted the ball up in the air. <clears throat> I'm going to hit F9 on my keyboard to set a keyframe for it. Now I'm going to go forwards, um, I don't know, maybe 10 frames. And I'm going to bring my ball down so it pretty much is sitting on the ground. Now I'm just doing this by eye. It looks kind of like it's sitting on the um, on the ground plane. What I might actually do is just create a floor so I can see if it is actually sitting on the uh, on the ground. There we go, close enough. So I've gone forward 10 frames. I've shifted it down onto the ground and I hit F9 to set a keyframe. So there's my animation path. I'm going to go forward another 10 frames. I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to hit F9 to set a keyframe. So I'm just going to do this a couple of times so that I've got three or four bounces of my ball going up and down. So shift forward on the timeline, position the object, set a keyframe, and repeat. Shift forward, position the object, set a keyframe. Uh, I'll do one more bounce, shift forward, position your object, set a keyframe, and I'll end with it up in the air again. Okay, so all I've done here is I've set keyframes for bounce positions up in the air or down on the ground. I haven't even thought about what the timing of this other than just putting these 10 frames apart. And this is the great thing about working with digital animation is that you don't actually have to worry about your timing when you're starting out with your animation. What you want to do is set some initial poses and then start working on the timing. So I've set my poses or my, my keyframes. Now I'm going to play through this and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've got a bouncing ball. I guess probably looking at that, the timing of it probably isn't bad, but the character of the animation is not particularly um, appealing. There's one thing in particular that's not happening here which is really making this animation not convincing, and that is that when the ball is heading towards the ground, Cinema 4D is automatically easing the motion so it slows down before it hits the ground. Now if you drop a ball, it doesn't know that it's going to hit the ground. It doesn't somehow magically slow itself down. It just goes down until it hits the ground, then it bounces off. And depending on the bounciness of the ball, um, it'll either bounce a lot or it'll bounce a little bit. So what we need to do uh, is to then start working on the character of this animation. Now, for this exercise, I'm happy with the timing. I'm going to leave the timing as it is. What I want to look at is the, uh, the in-between motion to control the character of the animation. I need the ball to hit the ground at full speed and bounce back off again. So I need to change the function curves in between the keyframes. Now I'm just animating up and down, which is the y-axis. So in my sphere, I'm going to jump into position, open this up, open up the y position, and I can see here is my function curve that's showing the up and down motion. And as we can see, it's a really nice smooth curve. The ball is automatically easing in and out. We want it to ease out from the top of its arc when it's falling down, but when it hits the ground, we want it to bounce off um, in a very sharp fashion. So what we need to do is make sure that this point where the ball hits the ground is not a smooth curve, but it's a sharp uh, sharp angle. So if I select this keyframe, what I can do is hold down the shift key and drag one of these arrows and that will break this Bezier tangent, this little wee smooth curve, so that I can get a hard uh, angle in my function curve. So if I have a look at that now and it bounces, 
that first bounce I can now see is a sharp bounce. If you're not entirely sure, we can duplicate this, this sphere. I'll just put it in a null and just move the null off to one side so that I can compare these two bouncing balls. And I'm just going to shorten my timeline down to the first 20 frames so that I can just see this first bounce that I've made. Now, hopefully you can see from that, it's a little hard to see, um, but the ball on the left is definitely just a little bit sharper when it hits the ground. I might try and exaggerate this a little bit more just by pulling these, oh, no, sorry, <laughs> I was going to say they look exactly the same, but they do because I've uh, duplicated it after I've smoothed it. I'm just going to go to my second sphere, I'm going to grab its function curve here, and I'm just going to make this an easy ease, which is uh, similar to what we have in After Effects when we set keyframes, and that will just create automatic smoothing. So hopefully now when I play this, yes, you can see very different. We've got a very smooth, unconvincing ball movement on the right, but the left one definitely has a lot more punch in it, and it really looks like it's impacting and bouncing off the ground. So again, exactly the same keyframes. All we've done is we've changed the in-between motion so that we've got a nice sharp impact and bounce at the point where it hits the ground. So I'm going to go through these other keyframes here with my, um, uh, my sphere on the left, and I'm just going to shift drag these handles. And I'm going to make a nice couple of keyframes that look sharp and snappy when it hits the ground. And I'll just extend this timeline out now to, what is it, 60 frames. So now we can see we've got a ball on the left that looks a lot snappier. It looks like it's bouncing properly. And that's the type of animation that we want. So again, keyframes are exactly the same, but the easing, the in-between, or the function curves, they're creating that motion which is far more uh, appealing and um, far more appropriate for the animation that we're doing.